This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is a wonderful day to be alive and to be uh, serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, for all of his goodness that he has shown to us in the past, uh, the goodness he shows to us today, and the goodness he will show to us in the days ahead. Uh, I welcome you to this daily devotion. Uh, today is a special day in the church year. It is Saints Peter and Paul Day today. And so um, our prayer will reflect upon that, uh, thanking God for their incredible witness uh, to his saving grace. And so we want to thank God for all of his wonderful saints, especially uh, Saints Peter and Paul. Uh, today we will be taking a look, uh, continuing our study, that is, um, in the Augsburg Confession. We will be taking a look at Articles 17 and 18. Now, Article 17 deals with Christ's return uh, for judgment, and then Article 18 uh, deals with free will. What does the Confession say about man's will, about humankind will? So, uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, our psalmody for today comes from Psalm 103, and we will, I will be reading verses 1 through 12. 103, Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. This is the word of the Lord. We pray. Merciful and eternal God, your holy apostles Peter and Paul received grace and strength to lay down their lives for the sake of your Son, Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit, that we may confess your truth, and at all times be ready to lay down our lives for him who laid down his life for us, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As I said, today we will be taking a look at Articles 17 and 18 of the Augsburg Confession. Uh, last time we met, we talked about church ceremonies and civil government. And um, the, the church ceremonies uh, dealt specifically about how the Lutheran uh, fathers wanted to maintain uh, order in the church, and they embraced uh, the historical traditions of the church. Uh, remember their, their goal was not to create a new church body, uh, but to reform the one that existed. Um, then the next article we dealt with was on civil government. Uh, there were some um, what we call um, radicals of the Reformation at the time who um, wanted to uh, remove themselves. They, they felt that order and authority in both the church and the state needed to be removed in order for um, for people to be super spiritual and so the Lutheran fathers uh, wanted to distance uh, themselves from that and and say that that um, that these institutions uh, of church and state are um, are God-given and we ought to follow them 
And so um, our next uh, article, Article 17, deals with Christ's return for judgment. And this article affirms the biblical view of the end times. It pointedly rejects any speculation or opinion about believers ruling the world before the final resurrection of the dead. Likewise, contrary to those who followed the more modern Left Behind series of a few years ago, this article rejects all theories about a millennial earthly rule of Christ as contrary to the word of God. We turn our attention now to Article 17 of the Augsburg Confession. Our churches teach that a person's, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's go back. Article 17 of a Christ's Return for Judgment. Our churches teach that at the end of the world, Christ will appear for judgment and will raise all the dead. See 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 5, verse 2. He will give the godly and elect eternal life and everlasting joys, but he will condemn ungodly people and the devils to be tormented without end. See Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Our churches condemn the Anabaptists, who think, that there will be an end to the punishments of condemned men and, de and devils. Our churches also condemn those who are spreading certain Jewish opinions that before the resurrection of the dead, the godly shall take possession of the kingdom of the world, the ungodly being everywhere suppressed. Uh, so there you have it, um, uh, the, uh, the Lutherans rejecting uh, these teachings on the millennial, what we call millennialism, um, and in favor um, going with a straight traditional uh, interpretation that Christ will return and the end comes at that time. Not a secret end, um, but that the end will come at that time. And no one knows when that will be, as scripture says as well. Um, we turn our attention now to um, to Article 18 of the Augsburg Confession on Free Will. By the time of the Reformation, the, Re the Roman Church had fully developed a false and faith-harming doctrine that stated that a person is able, to some degree, strive for and receive God's mercy, that somehow people, by their own striving, by their own works, could earn God's favor. This article here in Article 18 uh, asserts Scripture's teaching that people, apart from God's grace, are wholly incapable of perceiving spiritual things. The longest quote from a church father in the Augsburg Confession occurs here. It demonstrates Lutheranism's continuity with the historic universal Christian church in contrast to the Roman error on this doctrine. So in other words, um, here again, um, they are demonstrating that uh, they are in agreement with the historic church and that the Roman church, as it had developed over the years, had strayed far away from the historic teachings of Christianity. St. Augustine echoes the Bible's teaching that while we humans can perform acts of civil righteousness, which may be called good, spiritually, we are evil and enemies of God. And that is reinforced in the Bible, uh, where it talks about those who sin as being enemies of God. However, in Christ, our loving God breaks down the walls of hostility separating us from him. By his Spirit, through his word, he gives us Christ's perfect righteousness as a gift. Um, we call that gift grace, God's undeserved love for us. That's what grace means, uh, his undeserved love. And we say amazing grace, his amazing undeserved love. While in external worldly matters, we do have the freedom to make decisions according to human reason, this does not mean 
apart from God's grace, that we have similar powers in matters that pertain to eternal life. And so we turn our attention now to Article 18 of the Augsburg Confession on Free Will. Our churches teach that a person's will has some freedom to choose civil righteousness and to do things subject to reason. It has no power without the Holy Spirit to work the righteousness of God, that is, spiritual righteousness. For the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, 1 Corinthians 2.14 states. This righteousness is worked in the heart when the Holy Spirit is received through the Word, see Galatians chapter 3, verses 2-6. through six. This is what St. Augustine says in his hypo, Hypogonostition, uh, book, uh, that's a big long word, uh, book number three. We grant that all people have a free will. It is free as far as it is the judgment of reason. This does not mean that it is able without God either to begin or at least to complete anything that has to do with God. It is free only in works of this life, whether good or evil. Good I call those works that spring from, from the good in nature, such as willing to labor in the field, to eat and drink, to have a friend, to clothe oneself, to build a house, to marry a wife, to raise cattle, to learn various useful arts, or whatsoever good applies to this life. For all of these things depend on the prov providence of God. They are from him and exist through him. Works that are willing to worship an idol, to commit murder, and so forth, I call evil. That's a quote from St. Augustine. Our churches condemn the Pelagians and others who teach that without the Holy Spirit, by natural power alone, we are able to love God above all things and to do God's commandments according to the letter. Although nature is able in a certain way to do the outward work, for it is able to keep the hands from theft and murder, yet it cannot produce the inward motions, such as the fear of God, trusting God, chastity, patience, and so on. And so what the, um, what the Lutheran theologians are saying here is that um, our sinful nature has so corrupted us that we have no power when it comes to eternal life, when it comes to the spiritual things of God. We have no power. Uh, we cannot, um, in short, we cannot choose Jesus Christ. Uh, we cannot choose to follow Jesus Christ. We cannot choose to have faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, this is uh, completely and totally the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Now we can do good, we can choose to do good uh, when it's not, um, when in those things that are not pertaining to the Spirit, um, like, um, like helping our neighbor uh, who is in need, um, like, um, like clothing ourselves, as St. Augustine says, um, like, um, like deciding what to, to have for breakfast. These, these types of decisions we are able to do. But when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the spiritual things, we have no ability whatsoever. And so therefore, um, our salvation... Uh, from beginning to end, our salvation, our eternal life, our forgiveness is completely and totally God's doing. And therefore, he deserves all honor and praise. You'll notice that uh, they, again, quote or, or reference the Pelagians, uh, the Pelagians who believed that you could cooperate uh, with, um, with the Holy Spirit, with God, that there you, re you retain some good in you. And that, um, that teaching was condemned by the early church. And, um, and so here, again, the Lutheran theologians are making that point that they condemned that teaching just like the early church did, um, and that they give all glory, um, honor, and praise um, from beginning to end for our salvation. They give that to God. 
So um, here we are again, uh, two articles dealing with Christ's return for judgment and free will. Uh, next time uh, we meet, we'll be talking about the cause of sin in Article 19 and good works. Um, yeah, Lutherans do talk about good works, and it's right here in the Augsburg Confession. We'll talk about that next time. Uh, let's join with me now in uh, praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had a wonderful weekend, and I look forward to uh, connecting with you again uh, tomorrow. So uh, until that time, uh, the Lord be with you.